Hello everyone. Welcome to the Lyseric Papers. Today I would like to introduce you to the second electromagnetic wave. Up to now we have assumed that there, are only, that there is only one electromagnetic wave, which we have described as a alternating electromagnetic field wave. As I have now been able to mathematically describe this second electromagnetic wave, I have decided to create a series of videos to show how this second electromagnetic wave works and also to show the consequences of the second electromagnetic wave. The second electromagnetic wave is a self-sustaining electromagnetic particle wave. Because it is an electromagnetic particle wave, it will actually demonstrate the same features as the electromagnetic field wave. To start off with, I just want to show in this video and concentrate basically in this video that also, this electromagnetic particle wave fulfills the requirement that Einstein put forward in his 1905 miracle paper, I think it's the second or third page, which requires that the speed of light is constant irrespective of the emitting velocity, or the, the velocity of the particle that emits this light. So as you can see from the animation, basically, the blue ball is the particle and it emits a light beam. And basically, the particle has the velocity v1 and the light, of course, has the velocity c. So c minus V1 would then, would then be the delta V. But as you can see, the light would always have the velocity C. It never adds together. The second plausibility test of this self-sustaining electromagnetic particle wave is that it would have to also meet the definition of the divergence of the electric field would have to be equal to zero. And as you can see out of this little um, picture that I have inserted here, you can see that this electromagnetic wave would basically fulfill the divergence of the electric magnetic field equaling zero because the same amount of field would go into a test volume as would go out. Before going into the exact detail of this second electromagnetic particle wave, I would also like to talk a little bit about the consequences of a second self-sustaining electromagnetic particle wave, or actually a second electromagnetic wave, which is a self-sustaining electromagnetic particle wave. So as you can see, fundamentally, this wave is made out of a lot of particles that have a mass and a charge. And as light is mainly emitted from electrons, the fine structure of this electron has to be made out of these particles that have a mass and a charge. For the purpose of this paper or this video, we will call these particles atoms. The electromagnetic particle wave would act basically the same way as an electromagnetic field wave, but it would then explain some of the contradictions that have surrounded the measurements of the electromagnetic waves. But to start off with, it also has to meet 
the constant speed of light, irrespective of the emitting speed, it also has to meet um, the constantly measured E equals MC square. It has to um, be able to fulfill or um, show how the Rydberg constant works. Um, and from there, actually, I then create something completely new because out of the Rydberg constant follows the structure of the electron. And out of that, out of the structure of the electron, we can solve the contradiction surrounding the Bohr model. And then basically, one of the consequences of all this is a new description of antimatter, a then more detailed structure of the electron, and it can then explain other things like the redshift. Um, so having said this, let's now go the last and final slide, the constant speed of light irrespective of the emitting speed. Like I have said, these charged particles, atoms, spinning off the electron will naturally fly off in this helix form as the electron is also spinning around the atom. And therefore, they start creating their own magnetic field. And this magnetic field then forces the other atoms to revolve around this magnetic field, creating basically a flying helix. Um, as the magnetic field is the moving electric field, we can use the electrostatic force as the first approximation instead of the magnetic derivations. So the electrostatic force would then um, keep the centrifugal forces in check. So as one can see here, uh, I have shown the um, magnetic field that is created by the particles flying in this helix. And as you can see, I have shown not only the negative particles or atoms, but I also have shown the um, positive atoms positive charged atoms that I have designated with a red ring. So basically, in this case, this um, uh, helix is the what we have up till now called the photon. So basically, the equation here is that the atoms have a centrifugal force that is counterbalanced with a, and I oversimplify this with an electrostatic force. But as the charge is a constant and the mass of the atom is constant, the potential between the charges are constant. And thus, when you do the simple equation, you then achieve that the velocity v is basically dependent on the mass and the charge. And therefore, as the mass and the charge are constants, so will always the velocity v be a constant, which we call c. The detail math will from now on be published on my Patreon page, um, where also the future consecutive videos um, of this second electromagnetic wave will be published. So thank you for viewing this, and I hope to see you on my Patreon page. And uh, thank you very much, and hope to see you again. Thanks. Bye.